Now, O Lord, take my lips and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for yourself. Amen. Please be seated. Now, Advent has been all about Mary, with a very large supporting cast. The angel Gabriel, her cousin Elizabeth, Elizabeth's son, John the Baptist, a few shepherds thrown in for good measure, and oh yeah, the baby Jesus makes a silent but oh so important appearance too. And then we move to today, to Epiphany, and we pick up the Magi, or the three kings, or the three wise men. Pick your choice. Soon we'll be having our pageant with all of our angels. I, you would have thought I had that planned, wouldn't you? With all, I'm, I'm not that clever, I assure you. With all of our angels and shepherds and everyone else coming in, to illustrate this beautiful story. But wait a minute, I've left somebody out, somebody critical to the birth story of Jesus. Who could that be? Joseph, good old Joseph, good old stepdad Joseph. There are all kinds of stepdads out there, you know. Good ones, bad ones, not very involved ones, ones that forget the step part of their name and just act like a dad. And then there's Joseph. Well, you see, Joseph is the poster boy for stepdads everywhere. Joseph, in my opinion, doesn't get enough airtime. And we know so relatively little about him. Everything that we know about him comes from just two of the Gospels, Matthew and Luke. We do know that he was older than Mary, most likely widowed with children from his first marriage. He was a carpenter by trade, and he taught his stepson Jesus his craft. He was indeed a devout Jew. The last story that we hear about Joseph in the gospel is when he leads his family on the annual trip to the temple for Passover when Jesus is but 12 years of age, something that Jesus continued to do throughout his life. Yes, Joseph was a good role model, but he was so much more than that. He was first and foremost a protector. Let's start at the beginning. Joseph is betrothed to Mary. She comes to him with a fantastical story, truly one of a kind. An angel has told her that she is carrying God's baby. Joseph carries very much for Mary and he doesn't want her to receive the traditional punishment that would have been handed out to a young unmarried woman who is pregnant. For you see, that punishment is death by stoning. But if Joseph ended the engagement quietly and Mary was sent away to give birth in another village, perhaps with distant family relatives, maybe, just maybe, she would be able to survive. And that's what Joseph decided to do. But then he has this series of dreams, dreams, real dreams. An angel of the Lord comes to Joseph in his dreams, first to tell him that he should indeed marry Mary. Then the child is born, and gosh, so many miraculous things start to happen. Shepherds show up out of nowhere telling an unbelievable tale of angels singing and announcing the birth of the Messiah, his stepson. Then there is the visit from the Magi, also 
telling great stories about his little stepson. And then this newest dream, the one that we have here that warns him of great danger for the totally vulnerable newborn and his mother. They have to get out of town and they have to do it right away. The evidence must be mounting in Joseph's mind. And he does what this angel tells him to do in his dream. He takes his young family and he flees to Egypt to escape certain death for baby Jesus. Dramatic and oh so frightening. And Joseph, faithful stepdad Joseph, steps up. He must have had moments of disbelief in all of this. Surely he thought that he couldn't do it. He wouldn't be up to the task. Or maybe, just maybe he thought he was imagining that God was calling him to a task. But at some point, somewhere in this story, God broke through and got Joseph's attention. It's like that line, yes, I'm talking to you. And what is Joseph's story saying to us today? Besides, of course, what an awesome stepdad he was. Well, for me, he represents the best of us. Just us average Joes, so to speak. People of faith. People who show up for worship and know who their Lord is. People with thoughts and dreams of their own. People who might be getting an idea somewhere in their head that God is calling them to something. I bet y'all saw that coming, didn't you? Are you thinking to yourself that God just might be calling you? Yes, you. To grow his church here, to support it with your pledges, with your time, and with your abilities. God might be calling you to more regular worship in the new year. He might be calling you to join one of our current ministries, like the thrift store or the Saturday morning breakfast or Sunday school. Or maybe he's calling you to start a whole new ministry. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. You can look over your shoulder now and wonder if God is calling someone behind you to do his work. Or you can be like stepdad Joseph. And you can, with great trepidation, no doubt, say, Yes, Lord, what would you have me do? And as that angel said in that dream to Joseph, I say to each of you today, Do not be afraid, for the Lord is with you. Amen. Now I'd like to invite our pageant members to come in. The Nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Gospel writings of St. Luke and St. Matthew. Now, the birth of Jesus took place in this way. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to their own towns to be registered.
Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in, um, in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. <laughs> and the angel said to them, don't, is this on? Is this on? <laughs> Don't be afraid, for I am bringing you good news for great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. And suddenly there was an angel, um, there was the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. Goodwill toward men. When the angels had left, the shepherds said to one another, let us, now, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known unto us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Where is my gift for you? When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. 
And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him get gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road.